Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm back here at Sealka Ford Lincoln in Lawrenceville in the rain. Not any kind of weather is going to stop Shabby's Rides from bringing these cars to you. And we're here today to look at one massive SUV. This is Lincoln's full-size SUV. This is a 2023 Lincoln Navigator L Reserve in infinite black. We're going to check this out, see what it brings to this premium brand full-size, elongated length SUV segment. So let's dig in. All right, the rain's coming down pretty heavy, so we're going to go fast. This is one blinged up Navigator, infinite black, all chrome on the front, except for that gloss black, bl gloss black grill, huge Lincoln badge in the center, LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, LED turn signals, LED fog lamps, looking good. All right, wheel and tire set up on this Navigator. We have a 22 inch ginormous gloss black wheel, Lincoln badge in the center cap, standard broken brake and rotor package. These uh, wheels are wrapped in Pirelli Scorpion Verde all season tires, 285 on the width, a 45 series sidewall, 22s, all four corners, all wheel drive. Full side profile on this Navigator L. It's huge. It's big. It with all this black and the chrome everywhere. It looks like a limo. Let me know what you guys think as we move in closer. You got the Navigator badge right on the front fender, color matched on the side view mirror with LED turn signals and 360 degree cameras. We're color matched on the front and rear door handle with a little chrome, chrome down below on the door, chrome along the bottom of the windows. We come to the back, fuel filler cap on the left side. Up top, we have color matched roof with that uh, chrome roof rails. And as we come up here, we have a nice huge panoramic roof. All right, the back end of this massive Lincoln, very flat on the back of the Lincoln. We do have a small roof spoiler. We have a huge rear window with the wiper on the bottom. Lincoln spelled out underneath that. LED tail lights that come all the way across and connect in the middle, which is cool. LED. Uh, turn signals, all black down below, and then we have some uh, a panel that's on the lower part of the bumper. That's the towing action. We'll go over that when we take a look at the engine. And then we have a dual exhaust, but it comes out one side of the vehicle on, on the bottom right side tucked up underneath. All right, we're under the hood of this 2023 Lincoln Navigator L, and we have a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 engine made it to a 10-speed automatic transmission. 440 horsepower, 510 pound-feet of torque. This Navigator can tow up to 8,100 pounds. MPGs, 16 in the city, 22 on the highway, 18 combined. The engine's minimum octane rating is 87, so you can run this on regular unleaded gas. All right, before we get into the interior of this Navigator, you're going to want to know, Mike, what kind of money does this cost? Well, this is big dollars. Navigators are big money. Navigator L's are even bigger money. So what do we got going on? We got a base price, Lincoln Navigator L 4x4 reserve package, 97,660. Now we need to add in equipment group 201A for $6,310. Get you the tri-zone electronic temperature control, branded audio, HD, privacy glass, lit grill, star, Add in an extra $1,995 for the monochromatic package, body color, exterior mirror finish, monochromatic Lincoln badge, 22-inch wheels. Then we get credits for the removal of the standard functional liftgate and Active Park Assist 2.0 deleted for a $365 credit. That means we have a... And then we need to add in destination and delivery of $1,895 from Lincoln's Kentucky assembly plant, we have an MSRP uh, in total, $107,440. Let's check out this interior. And also before that, dealer added a couple of accessories, all weather floor mats for 205, wheel locks for 120. Total vehicle asking price on the lot today for this Navigator L, $107,765. Let's check out the interior. All right, getting into the interior. Before we get there, we open up that door and look at that. Power deployable running boards come down to help you get in. Nice touch. Here are our 
all-weather floor mats, SA navigator, big large dead pedal brake, and accelerator, Lincoln badge, lights up at night, welcome you to the vehicle. Power seats, that's all on the door. We have massive power seats with massage function and three-way memory, and of course, power fold mirrors. On this kind of vehicle, you're expected to have all that stuff, plus the Rebel Ultima sound system in here so we got big action going on on this navigator big door pockets as well with two cup holders and a huge area to put other things so a huge amount and then we got of course got the door poppers and uh you just have to hit this and boom the door comes open so really nice action we got stand sandstone leather interior with the bolstering with the headrest not a big fan of those light color interiors because they're getting dirty really really easy but it is well laid out all right, finally out of the rain, door panels looking good. Leather, of course, up top in the brown with the sandstone and the open pour wood on the insert looking good. Nice and soft, good looking uh, uh, design on there. And of course, the passenger side gets all of those power seat functions as well as the three memory seats, as well as massage. And we'll show you that when we go through the infotainment system. Good looking door panel, love the leather. Brown, wood, more sandstone. Huge glove box, infotainment system in the Navigator. This is a 13.2 inch Sync 4. Sync 4 means wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. And look at that response to the pinch to zoom, nice and quick. We can go to our audio settings. We can go to the phone. We can go back to our nav. We can plug in what, what we want to see on our favorites when we bring that up. We go to the apps, CarPlay, Android Auto, all wireless, like I said. Vehicle settings right here where you can sync your navigation, take care of your seating, and all that other good jazz. So it is really easy to figure out features. There's your power running boards, which you can tweak to either be automatic or go stay up or remain down. So they got a lot of different action going on on this 13.2-inch Sync 4 system. We go reverse nice huge backup camera with trajectory and the 360 view my apologies for the water on the back of the camera but it is raining out today but they're really nice and clear the weather doesn't give it justice unfortunately but we got to film when we can get the cars baby and that's the way it rolls here on shabby's rides we have dual zone climate control we'll show you that in a minute but you can see where the temperatures are right up top for both the driver and the front passenger. You can sync those together, but it's a nice, big, easy system. And I love the fact we got sync four here. Now we have our four-way hazards, two heat and air vents. These are our camera button right here. As we come down further, here's your push buttons to go through the 10-speed auto. And now down here, we got physical controls for your volume and your tuning and your music. Here we go with our dual climate control action, looking good. You can sync them together. You can put them on auto. You can adjust the temperature up or down here. We have three-stage heated seats and three-stage ventilated seats for the driver and the front passenger. And those also are synced in with the heat and air controls. So in the summer, if it's really hot out and the air conditioning is on when you start the car, your ventilated seats will come on automatically. So that is a very nice touch here in this Navigator L. As we come down further, we have a wireless charging pad, USB-C, USB-A, another area maybe for change, two cup holders, more of this nice open pour wood design, so there isn't a lot of gloss black on here. I like that. One thing that really lets me down here is the way Lincoln does their key fobs. All it is is a Ford key fob with a Lincoln badge on the back. I really wish Lincoln would have something nicer, considering it's a Lincoln and you're paying a lot of money for it. Unlock, lock, remote start, pop the tailgate, panic button, Lincoln badge on the back. Down here, we have our electronic parking brake, engine auto stop, start on, off, auto vehicle hold on, off, drive modes, big, huge center armrest that pops up. You got a huge area, removable tray, and then you got another 12 volt in here as well. So they got you covered. Now, I'm sure some of you are saying, Mike, where in the heck is the heated steering wheel? It's not down here where the heated and ventilated seats are, which is where it's supposed to be. And it's not on the wheel controls. Well, they buried the, uh, the heated steering wheel inside the climate function on the infotainment screen. And there it is right there. So you turn it on only on the infotainment screen and it defaults to 
uh, the music, but as you can see, you can go through a lot of different information on this little screen that they have in here. So that's kind of cool. And when you get to the climate portion, your heated steering wheel is down there. A little bit different here in the Navigator. Lincoln steering wheel, huge leather wrap steering wheel, all brown. Not so sure I like it all brown. Lincoln badge in the middle, flat black on the switch gear. Here on the left, you have your safety suite controls and cruise control, telephone voice commands, head up display controls and music controls. On the right, we have plastic paddles to go up and down this 10 speed automatic. Come on, Lincoln, 107, 108 grand, and I get plastic paddles. These should be magnesium. We have our bright lights and turn signals, front and rear wipers on the right stock. Down below, pop the tailgate, set our headlights, fog lamps, brighten and dim the dash, adjust our, our pedals in and out so you can reach them easier with your feet. That's a nice touch. Electric tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And now we have our big, huge uh, digital dash display. Looking good. Drive mode action. When we do that, here we go. We got normal as we move to the left on the dial. Normal, eco or conserve, sport or excite. And now we have to come back to the right to get the other. So I just wish the dial whipped all the way around. Normal and 4x4 automatic. So there's two normals. And then we have slippery. And then we have deep conditions, which would be heavy snow or mud. And that is the, are the modes. So that's what we look like here on this dash. Uh, and you can also, like I said, you can get that information up on the, on the, uh, on the, um, infotainment screen, but you can get the same information to come up here in the center as well, depending on what you would like to see as you're going down the road. So it's really easy and it's a nice looking display. Rear view mirror, standard rear view mirror, auto dimming. The reason why I'm showing you this is because in a $107,000, $108,000 vehicle, this should be a digital rear view mirror with a camera, not a standard one. So I don't like that. We have our, uh, overhead console place for your sunglasses. Now, if you want your LED lights to come on and off when you open and close the door, all these buttons across the top, they need to remain off. And then when you pop the door open, your LED lighting comes on, you close it up and you get the chime as well. You close it up and they will dim out. Here's the controls for the panoramic roof right here. And that's, these are the controls here for the actual shade. So if we want to open the shade, it's one touch, and it goes halfway. Then you need to hit it again to get it to go all the way back over in the mid-row passengers. And then once, that, once you have that open, you can hit this button here to open the glass. Now, it's pouring rain out, so I'm not, I'm not opening the glass. But you can open it up. It'll go halfway back, and it has a tilt function. And then when you're done, you just hit the close shade button, and the shade will come back. Again, stop halfway, and then you hit it a second time, and it will come all the way closed. There you go. Sun visor with vanity and lighting. And does it slide? No slide, but it is pretty long to almost block out the whole window, but it doesn't slide. That's a bummer. Underneath the center console, you also get extra storage. So it is a floating center console, which is nice. And it gives you some extra good places to put things that you may need to. Now, as we get to the massage, here's our massage function button right here. And when you push that button, everything shows up on your center screen. And you can go ahead and you can set it for however you would like, whether you want circular, relaxing, recovery, rolling, or pulse. So you can set that up however you would like on the driver settings, and then you can adjust it however you would like to adjust it as well. So it's a really easy system to figure out. And let's say I, this is right now on circular, say I want rolling, and I can go ahead and hit rolling, and it'll change to rolling, and it'll show you a picture of what the rolling does up there. And then when I want to turn it off, I don't have to fart around with the center console if I don't want to, or the infotainment screen if I don't want to, I can just hit this button right here. So this is to turn it on. This button here is to turn it off. You hit that button, and it all goes off. And it restores your seat settings. And then 
you can go back to your map and you're all set. Easy peasy, one, two, three. Mid road time, here we go. Again, we open the door. Our running boards come down. See to set for my driving position. We can pop right in to the back. Nice and easy peasy, one, two, three. Plenty of room at five foot 11 for my knees, for my head, for my shoulders. We do have now no leather on the backs of the seats. We have soft touch with a seat pocket behind each front seat. And then here in the back, you have your climate controls for the back. So we can hit climate, we can set it on auto. We can go back to home. We got our seats. We got three stage heated or three stage ventilated for both mid row passengers. So that's a nice touch. You can go to your music. You can control the music from back here as well. So I like that. And then we can go to vehicles, go to settings and you can figure out how do you wanna go ahead and take care of this uh, screen back here. So really nice setup back here. Then we got this action going on here where we have all sorts of power action. USB-C, USB-A on the left, 12 volt in the middle, home power source on the right, cup holders that pop out. So they got you covered in a big way here in the back of this navigator for connectivity and power. Back door panels, same as the front, looking good. Same use of material, same use of design. There's your front door panel. Now here's the back door panel, looking good. Like how that looks. Seating wise, sandstone leather with the stitching, with the nice soft headrest, looks good. Then we have a middle seat here, so we don't have an armrest because this is configured without captain's chairs in the mid row. It has three across, so you got two in the front, three in across in the mid row, three across in row number three. So you got an eight person configuration, but you can go with captain's chairs in the mid row with a center console if you would like. But here in the back, really comfortable in the mid row, liking what I see. And one thing I am missing, believe it or not, are security shades for the windows back here. You would have thought you would have had something like that back here, but I guess it is what it is. Let's go check out row number three. All right, checking out row number three. Just come to the mid row. Here's your button right here. You pull it up, and this whole seat moves forward. You got to push it forward. It's not automatic, and then you can just pop right in. Plenty of room to get into row number three. Plenty of room. Look at this. Look at that. Now, look how low my knees are. They're about the same as the mid row. I got huge amounts of room in row number three at five foot 11. Again, head, shoulder width, knee room, nice and flat. We're looking at this action. We can recline row number three. We got USB action and a cup holder, and we got heat and air vents as well as lighting back here. And we got again on the left side, we can also recline and we also have USB connectivity and two cup holders on the left. So they got you covered. Now, if I move to the middle, just to give you an idea how much room I have for my knees, look at that action in row number three. Now with this Navigator L, it should have plenty of room back here. It's a big, big vehicle, but it is a really nice place to, back, to be back here in row number three. If you wanna roll in a $108,000 vehicle, let me know what you guys think about rolling in something like this. Would this be bad news for you or would this be just totally overkill? Let me know what you think in the comments. But I can, I can actually even just talk up to the front passengers and tell them what kind of music I want or tell them where I want to go because riding in the back, I am a big dog back here. The little dogs are the drivers. All right, Navigator, same as Expedition, you can pop the glass separately from the tailgate. So if you just want to open the glass, it's on the left side, right here underneath the I and Lincoln. You hit that and the glass pops open. And then you can just reach in and grab something if you want. So that's a nice touch. If you want to open the entire tailgate, you can come and on the right side underneath the L, you have a button. Nice electric assist on the way up. Nice electric assist on the way down using this button here. And then we have huge amounts of space. With the third row up, this is a Navigator L. This has got big time space. Here's your front leg and plate bracket. Here are your nice carpeted floor mats, but I think they're brown with some stitching, but I think I would have loved to seen Navigator or something on these things rather than just plain. Let me know what you think. Underneath the brown carpeting, we have our uh, our uh, wheel locks as well as our jack and tools. And if we have a jack, that means we got the spare. 
And on the navigator, the spare is underneath behind the tow setup, underneath the car. But it's there and it's full size, so that's nice. We have tie downs, we have lighting, we have a 12 volt here in the back as well. And we can power down row number three and power down row number two. As should be expected in the navigator, you can either take down the left or the right or the middle button. You can take them both down at the same time. To save time, we're going to take them both down at the same time. So row three down, press the middle button. Down they go, nice and slow. Headrests automatically drop. And now we got big time room for those larger items. And if you want to max out the room, we go to the mid row, power down the mid row. There goes the middle seat. There goes the left seat, and there goes the right seat. All separate controls there. You can't do it in unison like you can with row three. And now you got humongous amounts of space for those ultra large items here in the back of this navigator. Now, if you want to power up row three, you can hit the button again and you can power row three back up. But to get row the mid row or row two back up, that is going to be a manual from either door. All right, window sticker, it's rainy. I'm going to give you the best shot here. Lincoln Navigator L. Standard equipment up top. Options down below. Total MSRP from the factory. Fuel economy. There isn't really any. Dealer accessories, total vehicle on MSRP, or excuse me, asking price. Let's take her out for a spin. All right, we are doing the, the driving portion of the review now. Thank God I'm out of the rain. It's gotten even harder out now. But first things first in this ginormous Navigator L, plenty of visibility out the window, side glass, rear glass, side view mirrors we got all the technology in here right with the blind spot monitoring the cross traffic alert the lane keep assist all that jazz is in here this is one big gigantic vehicle though and it feels big when you drive it now this 3.5 liter EcoBoost has makes really good power 440 horsepower 510 pound feet of torque so it moves this really heavy vehicle very very easily and the 10 speed automatic nice and smooth went over those wooden uh, bridge here's another wooden bridge you can hear a little bit of it a little bit of noise out of the tires but not bad the cabin fairly quiet but you do get a bit of road noise you do get a bit of, of noise from the outside of the vehicle so it's not silent like maybe I would have expected from a hundred and seven thousand hundred eight thousand dollar navigator but it's got really smooth driving characteristics really well damped your steering is light it is numb but that's to be expected in a luxury vehicle and a big SUV so you really can't complain too much about that got the nice head-up display that's giving me my range to tank right now how fast I'm going what the speed limit on the road is the temperature and the time, outside temperature and the time. So it gives me a lot of information and it's nice and big. So even like an old guy like me, I can, uh, I can read it easily. So I like that HUD looking good. And you can also adjust that HUD, make it higher or lower depending on how you would like it set. So that's really a nice touch as well. Now, the roads are very wet. It's been raining all night. It's still raining pretty hard out now. So we're gonna forego an emergency brake stop in this kind of heavy weather at 45 miles an hour. I'm gonna slow down and we'll do one at a slower speed because I don't wanna sail this baby off the road. So now we're down 35 and look at that. Nice and quick, nice and linear and off the road we go. hear that 3.5 liter growl now that could be pumped in noise and frankly that bothers some people I don't care if the noise is pumped in I just want to hear a cool noise 
doesn't matter to me but really well done this has got some serious power 8100 pounds of towing not bad that's max towing not bad for a car this size we'll give it a rolling start we'll see how it does nice quiet no nice pull down the road this 10 speed really smooth nice pull down the road in this navigator now we just put on the brakes a little bit slower on down don't want to go around these turns too fast in the wet in a big wallowy SUV and this is wallowy it is big it is large and it wallows like crazy in these turns so just keep that in mind you got some good power out of this v6 but this is not going to take the corners very well we'll do another takeoff this time from a stop in three two one very nice this is rear wheel drive biased and we go four wheel drive or all wheel drive as the weather dictates so you're going to get some better handling and better better performance since this is normally rear drive but really well done navigator the question becomes you go in $107,000, on a full-size SUV, that's a ton of money. And I remember back when we did the Jeep Wagoneer L. Same size as this vehicle, just about, and it was in the low 80s with a lot of nice interior appointments. So is it is it worth, a hundred? is the Navigator L worth this kind of money, 107, 108? And you can spec them up even higher if you want to probably in the low 110 12 113 somewhere in there at most but this is a very expensive suv the con you know where it's competing uh, competing directly against cadillac escalade elongated version and that's going to be even more expensive but of course the cadillac has the performance model uh which this is which the navigator doesn't so let me know if you're looking to spend a hundred plus thousand dollars on a full-size SUV is it Navigator L is it Cadillac Escalade is it Jeep Wagoneer L or Jeep Grand Wagoneer let me know what you guys think let me know how you spend your hard-earned hundred plus thousand dollars but I want to thank Sioka Ford Lincoln here in Lawrenceville New Jersey for allowing the channel access to this 2023 Lincoln Navigator L Reserve four-wheel uh, four drive for a review today. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please also consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.